We are back again with another two box nickel hunt. This is going to be episode 85 and boxes 144 and 145 for the series one album and boxes 44 and 45 for the series two books. Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure and welcome back to my channel. Like I said in the intro, we have a two box nickel hunt today and this time we've got one box from my local DFW area and another one of those Swiss cheese boxes from California. I'm hoping that not only can we score the 50D we need this time, but if not, something for the series two books or some more silver, buffaloes, and maybe another V nickel. Fingers crossed we can get so fortunate. That being said, if you're new to the channel or new to the series, we're on the quest to complete a Dance Code Jefferson Nickel album from Just Coin Roll Hunting Nickel Boxes. Now, if you'd like to get caught up on all of the actions starting at box one, I always have a link to the playlist starting at box one, linked both down below in the video description as well as pinned up here for your convenience. For those of you already caught up, you know we just need the 50D Key Date Nickel for the series one book, and now we're only needing four more for the series two books. Some of you have asked the question in the comments section if we think we're going to have the Series 2 books catch up to the Series 1 book before we find that 50D, and that is possible. Of course, hopefully today we can end that problem by finding the 50D. But if we don't, you guys know we'll still be excited to hunt a two-box nickel hunt and one from California, so maybe we'll see some fancy S-minted coins as well. Now, in my area, I get a lot of uncirculated nickel boxes, so I had to pop the top of this box to validate that we had circulated nickels, and we do. In the box sent to me from the subscriber from California, he also does get some periodic boxes of uncirculated nickels. So once again, he did poke some holes in the back to double check to see if he had anything as far as uncirculated. And I'll tell you, this box did not look that good by the few windows I took a peek in to see if we had circulated nickels. So it's obviously the reason why he punched so many holes. Either way, it is a bank sealed box. We will do a live opening on that box once we finish the first box. Let me slide these out of the way. We've talked long enough. We have a 100 roll hunt to do. Let's start cracking rolls. And as always, I'll bring you guys in if and when we have a find. Well, we just cracked into roll number one, laid them out because in the middle, I think I spied a potential war nickel edge. Figured we'd take a peek together. And we do. And I think that's a San Francisco mint as well. It is San Francisco minted 1943. I think we needed the 42S, but you know what? Might be an upgrader. Looks pretty good too. 1943S, we got an S minted war nickel in the DFW box. And I was hoping for those types of finds in the California box. Can't get mad at that. Roll one off to a nice start. Roll number seven is gonna give us our first four and find. It's just gonna be a Canadian nickel. And it's 1984, so it's not mainly minted out of nickel. But we'll take it. It's a nice find, and I'll always take one. We're already on roll number 20. It's been pretty quiet of a box other than the hot start. We have a 52P. We have that 43S war nickel in the Canadian. But finally, we have another find, a 1946 Denver. Roll number 23, a 1947 Jefferson nickel. From San Francisco, 47S. We'll take it. Roll number 33 is going to give us a 1948 nickel in pretty tough shape. 1948, Denver. Roll number 36 is going to give us a slight minting error. It's not off by much, but you can clearly see that the Liberty and the date is off to the right. Got kind of a thicker rim to the left. It's a misaligned die because the back is normal, but the other side is not. I put it under the scope. You can see it is off pretty well on that left side and tight on the right side. Not a lot of value unless it's off more than that, but figured I'd point it out since we periodically find these. And I do keep them regardless just because they're fun to find. Nice mint air, but not a lot of value to it. Roll number 44, and we thought that 48 was pretty slick. Check out this 1947. 1947, Denver, in tough shape. 
Roll number 46, and we have our oldest Jefferson of the hunt. Just a 1940 Philadelphia, though. Roll number 49, another nickel from the 40s. This time a 1941 San Francisco. We'll take it. We'll finish this roll, and we'll get on to the next one, or I'll be back with a wrap-up. Well, my local box didn't light up the scoreboard, but it was decent. We had 15 finds, and of course, finding a slight minting error and a war nickel will always make the box pretty good overall. That being said, that's only the first box of this two-box hunt. Now let me slide this one over, and we'll do a live opening on that California box, the last one I had from that trade, and let's see if we can find something good in that box. All right, let's go ahead and crack in to this box and see if we can get some lucky, whoops, some lucky finds. If we do, that'll be good for the series. All right, I don't see anything fancy schmancy and it looks like we do have quite a few more modern design enders. So this might be a tough box. Hopefully it's not as tough as it looks. We won't know until we get into it. Let me start opening up some rolls and I'll be back if and when we have some good finds. Roll one will yield our first find of the second box. It's going to be a 1948 Philadelphia. Roll number nine of box two, and I believe we have another war nickel. Just cracked it open, and this edge looked pretty promising. And we do. And that is another San Francisco minted war nickel. We do need the 42S. And it's the 44S. 43S, 44S, two war nickels, 41 rolls to go. Roll number 67, and we're going to have another foreign. But this time, it's from Bermuda. We've got a Queen Elizabeth II. Bermuda looks pretty modern. And it is $19.99, 5 cents, with a fish. We'll take it. Maybe we can feed the beaver the fish. Roll 68, another nickel from 1941. This one, from Denver. Roll number 71. Another nickel from 1946, and it's a 46 Philly. Roll number 89 is going to give us another find, and this one is from 1949. It's not in bad shape either. And I think that's a San Francisco. And it is. 1949S is actually a semi-key date. Right there. We'll take that, and it's in decent enough shape that it might upgrade one of the books. It's actually, other than the war nickels, our best find after 89 rolls, and we'll take it. And now after finding a 49, 51, and 52, maybe there'll be a 50 in there. Roll number 90, another 1940 Jefferson nickel from Philly. Well, I just cracked open roll number 94, and we had a really shiny edge, and I thought it might be a more modern nickel, like in the 50s or 60s, and I already took a peek, and it's a war nickel. Take a look at that edge first and foremost, and I noticed it because it just looked like a proof, possibly, if not an older strike. Anyway, I already saw it. We have a mint mark right there. Philadelphia minted Mint mark on the top means it's a war nickel, 35% silver. And take a look at this beauty. We don't find them like this too often. And it's a 42P, not a 42S. But you know what? That is a beauty. I'm going to scope this one to for any varieties. And then I am going to flip it up if it doesn't upgrade any of the books. Because that, my friends, is a stunner and maybe... It upgrades my personal collection. Let me take a look at it for any varieties, and I'll bring it back. It's our third war nickel of the hunt. All right, I've scoped it. I was mainly checking for that P over P repunched mint mark. It didn't have it. it. doesn't have full steps. It does have some circulation wear to it, but at the end of the day, it's probably a high AU, maybe a low mint state. But I'll take it. We don't find war nickels like this in circulation. And matter of fact, that's the second pretty nice war nickel, although it makes the second one pale in comparison to it. Probably an upgrader for the Series 1 book, maybe the Series 2 books, 
and definitely could be one that potentially upgrades my personal book. We'll have to take a look at that. Let's get back to the hunt and hope there's more like that in those last few rolls. Roll 100 of the 100 roll hunt. And we've got a final nickel fine, second from the end. Pretty nice 1949. 1949, Philadelphia. Still in pretty nice shape, might be an upgrader. And that's gonna conclude the hunt right now. Let me go ahead and get all the fines situated and I'll come back with a wrap up. Well, that concludes that two box hunt. And it was a pretty decent hunt overall. Not so much quantity, but we had some quality. We had 14 nickels in the 50s. We had 15 nickels in the 40s, including three war nickels and the 1949S semi-key date. We had that mint air with the slight misaligned die, which I'll take. We did find one pretty ugly 2009 Philadelphia. I do keep these sometimes, but uh, that's in pretty rough shape, so we'll toss it back. A couple of foreigns, the Canadian and the Bermuda nickel. We'll take those all day. And only one decent nickel that I think might be an upgrader. There's a little smudge on the word Liberty. But we'll take a look at it and see if it upgrades as well. Unfortunately, despite the nice finds, we probably are not going to have any additions yet again for any of the books, but we had some nicer looking finds and maybe one or two of those will upgrade. Let me go ahead and grab the book out. I'll compare the finds to the books and then I'll bring you guys back in with a final look at the albums and some final thoughts. Well, I'm bringing you back really quick because I made a clerical error. I said all along, I thought we needed the 42S for the second book. We needed the 42P and I'll get to that in a second. While I have you here, I went ahead and used the 49P, the 43S, and the 42P from this hunt to upgrade books. The 42P that we found that was in beautiful shape actually upgraded my personal collection. So I took my personal 42P and used it in this book, which wasn't even that nice. Can't believe I haven't spent the time to upgrade my personal collection in a while, but we got to use it. We also used today's hunt to upgrade the 43S and the 1949P. So three upgrades in the series one book this late in the game is awesome. And also we upgraded my personal collection with that 42P. Once I took the 42P out of my collection and put it in this one, I realized the one that was in the series one book, which was pretty bad, actually can be used in the series two book. Again, I thought it was the 42S, but maybe I've just been thinking about that because it's so ugly. At the end of the day, we actually will slot the 42P and inch us one more nickel closer to completing the second book as well, because now we only have the 39S, the 55P, and the 50D to find. Give me one second, I'll upgrade the slip, and we'll do a final wrap up here in a second. All right, we have got everything updated again. After 145 boxes for series one, we have 137 out of 138, still missing that 50D. And for series two, 133 out of 136. And of course, one of them is the 50D as well. At the end of the day, that was a pleasant surprise. I don't know why I was thinking 42S when it was 42P, but I will take it because in addition and some upgrades, you can't get mad at. On top of all that, we have three silvers for the 2022 silver jar, and you know that will make them happy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this two box hunt. I wanna thank the subscriber for that final nickel box that we did for trade. It was another dandy and it helped the cause. If you guys did, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching. Three more silver nickels yet again for the silver jar. And that makes them happy.